watching Israeli News Live. We came here today in Czech Republic, Prague, to visit Dr. Ludmila Elekova. She is a medical doctor. She lives in Prague, Czech Republic, and she is a is an activist uh, against vaccinations. We have talked before on our channel about adverse effects of vaccines, and recently on my private channel. I have interviewed several nurses from United States. Uh, nurses in United States today are uh, pressured into taking a yearly flu vaccine, and we know that it has caused a several uh, very negative reactions across the country. But what is the situation in Europe? So we decided to come and visit Dr. Ludmila Elekova and ask a few questions. Dr. Elekova. Uh, so, you are actively speaking against vaccines here in Czech Republic. You are one of, uh, well, very few doctors here speak out against vaccines, but you are one of the bravest doctors <laughs> that I know because I saw a lot of your shows on YouTube and I didn't really see any other doctor but you, I, I was able to find you. So, uh, what, why are you in this situation? What, why, why did you decide to speak against vaccines? What made you to look into this? It started with my child, mm -hmm. as usually. Uh, when my second son was born, it was in the 1996, I was completely convinced that vaccination is the, one of the best inventions of medicine, that it's safe, it's beneficial, that adverse effects are rare, that my child will benefit from being vaccinated, that he cannot get these terrible diseases and die. I was um, convinced that uh, to vaccinate him is helping him to be healthy, to helping him to survive. Mm -hmm. It's the main reason why we vaccinate. We want our children to be, um, to be healthier, to be, have a bigger chance to go, grow up. And I was really proud in the time, or happy, that we have the mandatory vaccination here. Mm -hmm. That we, how to say, responsible members of society are protected against these unresponsible people who would uh, break the collective or the herd immunity. Mm -hmm. So I took my three months old baby to the doctor and he got the DTP vaccine, the old one with Tiomero cell with mercury, uh -huh. yeah, with the whole cell pertussis part. I never, I didn't know, didn't know in the time that there is some aluminium in the vaccine. I didn't know there is the mercury in the vaccine. I didn't know what's, uh, how it's working, what's, what's going on in the, pers in the um, uh, human organism when it's vaccinated. So I, with a, a complete trust, let uh, the doctor to vaccinate my son. Mm -hmm. uh, we came home, we woke up and started to cry. He had the insoncolable cry or the high-pitched cry, the encephalitic cry. He cried three days with pauses as well, of course. But he was crying and was so screaming and high and it was heartbreaking cry. Mm -hmm. And it was not about hunger, it was not about the wet diaper, it was not about anything. He was just screaming and screaming and I couldn't calm him down. Mm -hmm. I was terrified, I didn't expect it. And I when after feeding him, I unwrapped him. The whole his bottom, the half of his bot bottom was red, completely swelled, completely red, not just a spot, the whole half of his bottom. Mm -hmm. So it was as well the allergic reaction. He had some fever, but the fever was not very high. It was about 38 degrees. But he was screaming, not drinking, and, and etc. It went about three days. Of course, the next day I called the doctor. I was very uh, terrified. And he told me, well, okay, the next dose we give in a different way. I didn't know that this is the reaction which should be reported to the authorities. Mm -hmm. It should be reported to our uh, regulatory organ. I didn't know that the, uh, this re reaction means probably it was allergy, so he should not be vaccinated again. I didn't know it is reaction which is uh, touching his nervous system, so that he shouldn't be vaccinated anymore. Mm -hmm. So we went on. The other uh, vaccines was uh, without reaction, but after this first dose, when this acute thing subsided, his sleeping pattern changed. He started to wake up every night, every 20, 30 minutes with screaming. Mm -hmm. It went for months. I was like the zombie in the day. 
I, I didn't, con but what's important, I didn't connect it in that time that his change in sleeping is still the reaction to the vaccine. So you didn't connect? All that I was thinking, well, maybe there is uh, something in the surrounding, something in the daily regime, something is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So he stopped sleeping. And when he was a toddler, there was uh, banging with, ha with hand in uh, temper tantrums, uh -huh. terrible tools. He was very angry, very aggressive, very um, upset for everything. And he was banging his ha head against the pavement, against the wall against anything in the affectionate. He was very negative. It was very hard to educate him to, to take care about him. But he was talking perfectly. He was developing perfectly. There was no problem in the development. Mm -hmm. Compared with his older brother, they were talking in two years, they were talking in sentences. Okay. It was normal then. All children were talking in sentences when they were two. They had hundreds of words. He was playing with everything. He was a good finance, gross skill motors. He had three years. He was competing small ego. No problem with development. Maybe if uh, he had some problem with development, with some hypotonia, anything, maybe I got some suspicion. But I had no information how to connect these things. So you so, are a medical doctor. And when you were in medical school, yeah. They didn't teach you about adverse effects or what you can expect uh, or what can well, happen. Uh, what I knew in the time was that um, uh, the vaccine is making you produce antibodies. Mm -hmm. That's all about immunity. That maybe you can have some allergic reaction as to everything. And then sometimes in a very rare instances, somewhere after several hour mountains <laughs> far away, uh, it can happen some adverse effect like uh, something with the neurological system. Mm -hmm. It was nothing you expected happened to you. Right. It was nothing that you expect. Uh, but it was about the acute reaction. I didn't know that can be some long time uh, sequela, that can be change in behavior, that can be change in development, that can be change in the so character of the child. That was never discussed in medical no. school. No. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. told you, I never ever, I never even know the, what is in the vaccine, the, the, con, the ingredients. The ingredients. So yes. it took about nine years until mm -hmm. I find out that the problem with the behavior with my son is because of the vaccination. So I, you started to study any scientific... Uh, uh, no, uh, I just thought that he's a complicated person, mm -hmm. that it's his character. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was strange because um, something inside me was saying to me, it is not normal. Mm -hmm. It is not normal that I cannot explain him the rules, that he's still upset for everything and crying and screaming and banging things, that it's not normal, that it's not my wrong um, taking out uh, and uh, bringing, up. bringing it up. Mm -hmm. uh, that something, something, such a voice inside that it's not normal. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have no no idea what's going on. There was no internet in the time here, and when he was about nine years o'clock, I uh, nine, nine years old, I went to a lecture of Dr. Tino Smith. Mm -hmm. It was a famous um, um, doctor from Netherlands. He was doing homeopathy and he was lecturing about post vaccination syndrome. That so he was saying how it looks like, how is some cases, and I was sitting there in that seminar. I thought, wow. It's about my son. Wow. So in the time I realized that the, all these things that are going on, on can be from vaccination. So I started to uh, treat him with the homeopathy in the time with the way how to treat it. It helped a, a, lot, a little. Then uh, the, uh, a huge um, amelioration was when we uh, stopped giving him milk, cow milk, because we found out when he was 13 that he is a uh, maybe allergy or making castle morphines, I don't know, but the milk, the milk protein, casein, it was like cocaine for him. Mm -hmm. So after several days without milk products, I had a different child. Wow. But now he is adult, but still there are results, still there is something. He is not okay. He's a typical GAPS child. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a gut and psychology syndrome from Natasha Kambandeba. I see the line, the whole, like a red line. Red thread through all his life is a typical GAPS child. I had the risk factors, the wrong uh, bad gut flora, there were the infections in my pregnancy, mm. etc. 
So I see it in a, and I look back. So it was my own experience and then experience with my homopathic um, clients when I saw the pattern that Dr. C Smith talked about, I started to see the children and I realized it's really a mass thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started to be curious because in the time it was about the homopaths were saying, well, vaccination is not okay. There can be some problems which are not recognized by conventional medicine. And because I'm a doctor and I knew that I need better arguments, I cannot say, well, homopathy says vaccination is not good. It sounds like a nonsense for, uh, for people. And the internet came here, so I had uh, access to the, a lot of resources. I start to be uh, curious and I start to study and uh, look the things well. And as I went on, it was developing and brought me where I'm here. Mm -hmm. So all my objections agro vaccination are rooted in the normal official scientific, science. Yeah, yeah. scientific It's research. nothing alternative about it. Mm -hmm. Although it was my uh, experience with homopathy which brought me to the idea to start to investigate it. My objections, my concerns are rooted in the science. And in several years, there is a boom in this um, uh, uh, scientific um, examinations and research mm -hmm. that uh, they started maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they started to research what is in the vaccine, what the adjuvants are doing. Mm -hmm. They started and to research the aluminium adjuvants. That's my next question. When I'm comparing, uh, let's say, Czech Republic to United mm. States, our latest CDC uh, findings, Center for Disease Control and Protection, has admitted that uh, excluding all these heavy metals that are inside the vaccines, uh, live viruses and bacteria, mm -hmm. as well as dead ones, okay, uh, we can find like monosodium glutamate, yeah. formaldehyde. Um, we can find pig blood, monkey yeah. blood. Yeah. That we can find uh, fetal cell lines. Yeah, yeah. These are cells yeah, from saw, aborted I the babies. Yeah, I saw the list. Yeah, it's a WI38 from a 14 months old aborted yeah. fetus, female fetus. Okay, so we have fetal cell lines. Mm -hmm. cancer, we have cancer, uh, cancer line. Cancer 40 virus. That was actually admitted by CDC. And on their website, that millions of Americans were, were um, injected with cancer virus, SV40. And then they took it down. They put it up and then they took it down because it caused a massive pa you know, panic. I mean, mm. but uh, okay, so... We are having all these things inside of vaccines in the United States admitted. Is it the same thing here? Yeah, of course, because you have the global players, you know, the pharma, mm -hmm. pharmaceutical, um, big pharma, the, the companies who are producing vaccines, they are producing in the huge amounts for the whole Europe, for the uh -huh. whole world. Right. And uh, I was um, corresponding once uh, with um, GlaxoSmithKline mm -hmm. uh, because I saw the discrepancies between the uh, leaflet uh, in uh, for Australia, mm -hmm. it was in Phoenix Hexa, and leaflet for Europe, for Czech one. There was a difference between um, uh, what was listed as these um, um, trace um, ingredients or these things. I think that in the Australian there was a formaldehyde, not in the Czech one. It were some uh, rests of antibiotics. Okay. And these antibiotics there and polysorbates. Okay. Five or six things mm -hmm. was listed in the Australian, not in the Czech one. So I asked the, the company whether they are producing more toxic thing for the Australians, mm -hmm. or is the problem is with the uh, with the list. And they answered me that is the same vaccine for the whole world, but because the European law that mean law of the European Union doesn't rec uh, uh, doesn't want them, doesn't make them to list every single residue. Ah. They don't do it. So they're basically lying to Czech people. Yeah. It looks like a better vaccine with less. It looks like better vaccine, but that means, you know, there were residues of antibiotics. That means the doctor who is vaccinated, vaccinating, mm -hmm. don't, doesn't know that he's injecting 
something with the residues of antibiotics, maybe to the person with the allergy to the antibiotics. Wow. So I think there is a, this is a violation of informed consent. How can I give the informed consent when I don't know what is in the vial? In the vial mm -hmm. You know? Yes. So, but the ingredients, um, it's filthy. Yes, of course. It's a very, very disgusting list. But the main problem with the vaccine, because I was, I was investigating what's going on in the brain of my child, of other children, when they are crying and screaming mm -hmm. the long hours, mm -hmm. when they are have seizures, when yes. they they are stop communicating, when they are uh, they are go uh, they go to the hypotony or stop developing. What's going on? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, going. It's uh, coming out that probably the biggest problem is the adjuvant, the element adjuvant, maybe the other adjuvant, the thing which is making your body to react to the vaccine. Mm -hmm. That the type of the immune reaction which is launching, launched after uh, the injection, that's the problem. Because it's funny thing, uh, thing that aluminium is inert. When they, uh, the aluminium was uh, added to vaccine in the 20s of the last century, uh, because they found out when they put the aluminium, they can uh, uh, lower down mm -hmm. a lot uh, the number or the amount of the bacteria. Okay. So it was cheaper and it was more predictable mm -hmm. because of the very small dose of the bacteria and the aluminium and it was launching much more intense immune reaction. Was there any studies no. back then on... No. And the, uh, the funny thing is that they were thinking that the aluminium is biologically inert. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a it's complete nonsense. How well, can... when you go to pediatrician today with your child and you say, I have a concern, it has aluminum. Yeah. Uh, he will tell you, well, your breast milk has aluminum. Yeah, and others uh, still right? bullshit. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> you know, they are giving something to vaccine, which is responsible for the uh, effect of the efficiency. The vaccine would not be efficient without the vaccine, okay. the aluminium. So uh -huh. it's there because it's necessary mm -hmm. for the vaccine to do what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And they are saying us it's biologically inert, mm -hmm. you know, yes. where it is inert, then don't need to be there. Well, the bullshit about the aluminium, yeah, the dose is minute. It's in your breast milk. When you lick the, the lid of the yogurt, you get the same and all these mm -hmm. things. Well, it's in the water. Uh, you know, I think the doctors <laughs> don't do mathematics. Because mm -hmm. uh, they should know that when you are ingesting by your mouth, in the water, in the food, the aluminium, the bioavailability, that means how much you resorb, is minute. It's 0.4% mm -hmm. or 0.2%. That means one four hundredth you got in your body and your body immediately get rid of it. By, by your urinating. Kidneys. You yeah. urinate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's in several hours it's out of your body by by your kidney. That means even if you ingest some aluminium, the most of it goes out with you in your stool and only the minute amount you got in and you get rid of it. But there is a problem when you inject it. Yeah, when you ingest, when you eat it. Yeah, but how about injecting? But if you like... put in a shot, that mm -hmm. means that it's hundred percent it's in you. Wow. Yeah, of course, the injections in your in your butt. That means everything is in you. So when you got when you eat something with some declared amount of aluminium, only one part of the four hundred parts gets in your body, mm -hmm. and you get rid of it very quickly. But if you get a, a shot, a, a vaccine with aluminium, all the aluminium which is declared there is in your body, and the problem is that you cannot get rid of it in a few hours because it's a big complex, it's um, bounded with antigen, okay. and it's too big to go through the kidneys to your urine. But it's not about, um, it's not the main problem. The problem is that the aluminium in the injection site is uh, attracting your immune cells, and your own DNA, your own tissue is mm -hmm. the attractor for that, mm -hmm. because the Needle is thick. Needle is making some damage. Needle is destroying your cells. So the um, mm -hmm. um, what's inside in your cells, the, cell, uh, the uh, cells are torn. Mm -hmm. It goes out, and there it is a mess. You have the vaccine. You have the these, these antigens you should react against. You have the aluminium. 
you had some all these contaminants and all these things from your list. You have some uh, residues of anything, which is anvexine. You have the other chemicals. You have your own tissues. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the problem is, another problem is that the aluminium um, don't need to, uh, doesn't need to be bound to the antigen to make your immune system react. It started, it's, it's enough that it's there. That means you have this, uh, this soup, this um, yeah. mess, and inside there's an aluminium, and your in, uh, immune system are coming there. And I, my question is, how, they, how your white cells know what they should um, react to mm -hmm. and what they should Shouldn't. not? That yeah. means that autoimmune reactions, autoimmunity, is inherent part of the vaccine mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. Allergy so, is inherent part of the vaccine effect. So today, allergies are on a rise. We know a lot yeah, of children have allergies. Rise. And uh, I think it's, he's from Israel, Dr. Yehuda Schoenfeld. Mm -hmm. is a famous immunologist and he, was, uh, he coined the, the autoimmune syndrome induced by adjuvants, the ASIA syndrome. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's called Schoenfeld syndrome, according to him. And um, it's uh, described in a great detail on the molecular and cell level, how exactly these adjuvants are changing the reactions of your system and how exactly they are make, causing autoimmunity and are causing the allergies. And it was even described that the aluminium from the injection site is getting to the brain. Mm -hmm. And what, what? They are the immune cells. Okay. The immune cells is transporting it to the glands, immune gland, uh, the glands, and then uh, to the brain. So lowered immunity, which allergy is lowered immunity. Yeah. You have allergies, lower Im lowered very, immunity. Very but I think that these are lucky people who only have those. Yeah. What are the worst side effects? I mean, it gets death. more complicated. No, than so the worst side effects is death. 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 Mm -hmm. Or neurological damage or maybe um, brain damage or... Um, the, which is very, uh, another thing which is very strange that we have the how to say, mass vaccination program since the second war, mm -hmm. since 50s. Yeah. Yeah, 50s, that means it's about 60 years. Uh, the people are vaccinated in this way about 60 years. And during the 60 years, mm -hmm. nobody made a research. Mm -hmm. Nobody, after the 60 years of mass vaccinations, maybe thousands of, uh, or hundreds of million doses, nobody is able to say, well, we know what's going on in the brain of the person who has the adverse reaction to vaccine and who has some neurological symptoms. Mm -hmm. Nobody is able to tell me what was happening with my son. Right. What's going on in his brain when he was crying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody is able to tell my mother whose child go to the regression, uh, whose development is uh, hindered, who has seizures. No doctor is able to say, well, we can tell you that in your brain or your child is get, uh, going this and this and this. When someone dies after vaccination, it always is just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. You know, always is a coincidence. Everybody is very quickly finished, quickly. Mm -hmm. It cannot be connected. It's just a coincidence. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, when I was little, I was brought up in Slovakia under communism. And when they uh, came to vaccinate us, uh, they came to school. Yeah, I remember And they as just well. vaccinated us in school. Our mothers didn't know. They had no idea. We came home, we were vaccinated. Nothing was signed by us children. They didn't mm. have parents signed mm. that, yes, mm. you can vaccinate. So that was during communism, right? But today here in Czech Republic, at least in United States, when you go to your doctor for a well check with your, with your children, uh, they recommend, of course, there is a vaccination program and then they give you paper to sign. And then on that paper, you have adverse effects, what can happen to your child. Oh, it can be mild, like a swelling at the yeah, injection yeah. site or a fever or uh, um, mm -hmm. high pitch crying. But it can also cause neurological illness. It can cause SID, sudden infant death syndrome. And these mothers are signing that piece of paper, okay, hoping that it's not going to be their child. 
in here in Czech Republic, does doctor give the mother? Yeah, usually they give the uh, to sign the informed consent, but it's mm -hmm. a ridiculous thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something that I was uh, informed uh, about uh, the benefits of the vaccination. I was informed about um, the side effects and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. It's uh, in fact uh, I show it to a lawyer and uh, he told me it's a scrape of the paper mm -hmm. because it's not listed like you said it was listed there. Uh, so, so it's not usually listed. Usually the doctor said, well, your child can have a little fever and maybe a little swelling. So you don't have a consent here? Yeah, but... the, the consent, but the consent is nothing saying. So it doesn't say it can have even SIDS? No. Sudden no, infant death no, syndrome? No, no, no. Because, you know, if you look inside of a paper that is inside a vaccine and you open that paper yeah. up and you start reading little letters, right? And in these little letters it says, oh, SIDS. I'm not sure whether so in our country, syndrome. in our leaflets, it's uh, sits listed. Maybe somewhere it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's always listed that it was reported after um, the launching the vaccine, after the normal clinical use, mm -hmm. and that is no proof about the connection, about the causality. Okay. Yeah? So well, so people are are reporting. Okay, we put it there, but we think. It's not connected. But yes, I saw the vaccine, there was SIDS, uh, there was autism, and there was other things. But uh, in the leaflets, they are definitely, they are listed, they are neurological problems. Mm -hmm. They are listed allergic, in, uh, including anaphylactic reaction. Mm -hmm. They are listed autoimmune diseases. Okay. So it's there. But uh, they are num not numbers, they are not the frequency. Uh, but people don't know it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, recently there was some um, some um, about the po population there were some uh, uh, some uh, I'm sorry I can't remember it's okay if, 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 um, we can um, cut this out um, Bruce Fum uh, there was a study not a study just um, uh, they were asking people what they know about vaccination Mm -hmm. But recently uh, here they were asking people what they know about vaccination, if, whether they want mandatory vaccination, uh, whether um, uh, what, and they asked them what are the diseases we are vaccinated again. Mm -hmm. And only a small minority, maybe 10% mm -hmm. know which disease. Everybody wants mandatory vaccination, they are okay with that, yeah, or almost everybody, a lot of people want it and they are satisfied with the system and they think it's great, but they don't know which diseases it is against. That's a lack of education and I think they trust their doctors. They trust the system, they trust their medical doctors, their pediatricians. Mostly yes, mostly yes, but um, I think that people start to educate themselves because, because uh, really a lot of children and even the, the adult people have problems. And yes. the mothers are connecting via uh, social network and they mm -hmm. are uh, sharing their experience. Mm -hmm. And they start to ask the doctors but the doctors are not educated as well. Well, and I will tell you, the objection of mainstream pediatrician mm. is that's what they will tell the mother. They will say, okay, well, but vaccines helped us to get rid of uh, infections like polio or whooping cough. But it's not true. So what do you say about that? Well, if you look at the historical data mm -hmm. and the statistics and the curves uh, which are showing, you see that uh, 99 percent, 95, 99 percent of uh, not only mortality but even in the incidence was away, uh, of, was um, uh, went down. It was it went down uh, minus 99 percent before you started to vaccinate against anything. Oh, okay, so the so diseases you, were wiped out. Yes, the diseases were wipe, wiped out, or we are not, we were, we were not dying for the, uh, on them anymore. Uh -huh. You know, and for then, example, when you, uh, you, uh, the measles vaccination started, mm -hmm. the mortality was very low mm -hmm. in the normal in the civilized countries. Uh, you see a huge drop in the incidence and a huge drop in the mortality between the first and the second war. Mm -hmm. So what was? Um, wiping up the diseases between the wars when yeah. you were not vaccinated. What was it? You have another uh, another argument against this that uh, you have uh, diseases we never vaccinated against, mm -hmm. like plague, okay, cholera, typhus, okay. yes, scarlet fever, okay, and other. Where are they? And we Why we are them. not dying of scarlet fever? 
-hmm. It was a deadly disease. Yeah. It was a lethal disease in the middle of the 19th century. The lethality of uh, scarlet fever among children was about 40%. That means 40% sick with scarlet fever died. It was the highest mortality of all the childhood diseases. The people were more afraid of scarlet fever than from variola. Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, why we are not afraid of scarlet fever? There was never ever any vaccine against it. Mm -hmm. We never vaccinated. And now, there are, in our country, there are several thousand cases every year. Okay. Nobody is scared, nobody has problem. Why? Right. And 100 years ago, it was a bigger problem. But it was not about antibiotics, because if you see the curve, the graph, you see that the drop almost to the zero with the mortality was before the war. Before mm -hmm. the antibiotics. So, what, what do you think? Why did this happen? What motivated? Why is this happening? What is the motivation for a vaccination? Mm, uh, you know, in the time uh, when um, the first no, uh, modern vaccine started to be invented, that means we are talking about the uh, period between the first and the second world war. Mm -hmm. The diseases were still were there and were killing because the social situation of the most of the people was not good. There mm -hmm. was of poverty, there was malnutrition, um, not mm -hmm. good uh, living conditions, uh, dirty maybe water, food, etc. That means children got the diseases and were dying on the diseases. So it was there. So there was a um, request from the, pop from the people, from the government to do something. Mm -hmm. So they tried to start to develop a vaccine because they believed that if you, if uh, uh, the vaccine makes you to produce antibodies, mm -hmm. it means protection against the diseases. Right. But it's not true as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but it, they believe like that. So they, when they start to develop the first vaccine, it was against diphtheria, against tetanus, against pertussis, mm -hmm. against smallpox in that time as well. Yeah, it was all. So the diseases were really big problem, and they started to vaccinate. And the diseases were going down, so it was easy to make a mistake mm -hmm. and mistake and uh, mistake the correlation with causality mm -hmm. because correlation is not causality. Mm -hmm. And the diseases were going away not because of the vaccination but because of the making people better living, maybe better apartments, clean uh, water, veterinary controls of uh, food. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe better hygiene. Uh, maybe water toilet. Right. Washing myself every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going to outside to the sun. Doing laundry. Shorter uh, working day. Yeah. You know, you have two union organizations. Uh, thanks for the uh, extinction of the diseases because the working people were not working so long hours. They forbidden a childhood, a child's work, children's mm -hmm. work, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So this was a big change. If you imagine how common people lived in the middle of the 19th, how they lived uh, one hit 100 years later. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger, big difference. So somehow the, um, the propagators of vaccine didn't realize that not only these diseases are going away, but only the other diseases we were never vaccinated against. Wow. <laughs> and so uh, these four diseases, there was a demand. We want to do something with them. Mm. Polio was another case. But the polio was a little complicated. Uh, you have to know that uh, before there was a vaccine against polio, to get the diagnosis and to fill the statistics, it was necessarily two things. The flabby paralysis, which uh, lasted longer than 24 hours, mm -hmm. and exclusions of the bacterial cause of, of the neurological symptoms. Mm -hmm. No virus testing, no serology, nothing. Just a clinical picture. And uh, that was all. But there was a big epidemic after the war. But the causes, it's not about the virus. Uh, it's probably about DDT, mm -hmm. about the other toxins. Okay. And it's funny because uh, the polio is the only disease uh, in the time whose incidence go up with the better living conditions. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. the explanation is like that. We need some we need to be exposed to the uh, microbes in a specific age, in a specific order. 
-hmm. They have to come according to the uh, time schedule. Okay. Yeah. So the baby and the toddler should be exposed to a lot of things, even parasites. So maybe that's so why it's good. When so they it helps to mature his immune system. Right. And when the child gets in contact with poliovirus when it's a small baby, mm -hmm. it usually goes without any symptoms. And when the contact is later, it can make symptoms. It's similar like the other diseases. If you have, for example, a, a BV, Epstein Barr virus, mm -hmm. when a small child is uh, infected, usually it's no disease or just a minor problem. Mm -hmm. When a teenager is for the first time in infected, gets mononucleosis. Yes, yes. Or the childhood diseases. If you have a, a measles as a small child, you have probably much more better course of the diseases compared with the adult people. Mm -hmm. So uh, because of the better living conditions, that means less dirt, mm -hmm. the children were not exposed to the poliovirus in the ideal age. The other thing was that after the Second War, people, the children were not uh, breastfed. It was not in the fashion. It was out fashion. The fashion was the bottle. Mm -hmm. So uh, somewhere I saw the statistics that in the 50s, only five children leaving the hospital after the birth were breastfed. Wow. That mm. means no natural immunity. Right. The other thing was that the uh, baby formula is made from a normal cow milk. Mm. And the cows were grazing and were eating the grass and there was DDT in the cha food chain. Mm -hmm. So the children were fed with DDT. In the US, in the time, you can buy a DDT bottle in the drugstore and put it in your own lawn. Nobody was caring. Yes. Yeah, nobody uh, no, uh, knew that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So there was a contamination of these things, etc. And there were a lot of doctors who were very successful in treating polio at the time with mm -hmm. megadoses of vitamin C yes. or some other naturopathic um, yes. approaches mm -hmm. because they thought that it's an intoxication. Mm -hmm. And there was a sort of a great demand to make something with the epidemic because it's really terrifying. Imagine you have a completely healthy child. Mm -hmm. In the evening, it goes to the bed, gets fever, and the second day is paralyzed. So it's very natural to understand why people were terrified and right. they want something. Mm -hmm. So they were working on the vaccine. They found out that the live virus is causing polio. Mm -hmm. There were outbreaks from the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So then there was uh, invented the dead virus. Okay. Um, but still in the situation that if the, doc uh, the doctors were faced with the situation that the vaccine is causing polio, with this atmosphere of high expectation, Mm -hmm. uh, of high expectation, and they were un not able, probably, to say people, well, sorry, we didn't, ha didn't, ha we didn't make it, it's not working. Instead of it, they changed the criteria, they changed the, the um, uh, symptoms. That means if you, after the vaccination, should be listed as polio, uh, if you should be listed as a polio case, you have to be paralyzed for 60 days, so from Monday to 60 days. Mm -hmm. Suddenly they start to uh, have a separate list of the aseptic meningi meningitis, that means virus meningitis, so other cases of virus meningitis which were before to the, uh, belong to the polio suddenly was listed ex extra. And they find out there are different viruses which are making this polio-like syn uh, syndrome. That means they started to, and they started to make the serological tests. So after the va uh, vaccination campaign, you have to be paralyzed for 60 days and you have to be, have had proof of the polio virus. Okay. And all the other causes, which are in the big bag mm -hmm. together before the vaccination, started to be listed extra. So only this trick, this statistic trick, make the polio disappear. And recently I look in, uh, in the Czech statistic um, uh, page, uh, website, where they list the, some diseases which are tracking the incidence. And I, when I saw, when I, I knew what I look, I should look for. There are several, there are several cases, hundred cases, in our republic, of the diseases which very probably would be listed like a polio before the vaccination. Mm -hmm. But they are listed like something else. I'm okay. not saying it's polio. I'm just saying that the clinical picture looks is, like polio. looks like a polio and probably could be listed as a polio before. Mm -hmm. So what is what, what um, you know the here was uh, in Europe, in, especially in the post Soviet uh, the Soviet bloc, mm -hmm. we used for a long time. You remember it? That was the spoon with the yes. sugar 
uh, with the vaccine. We, so we were using the live oral polio vaccine. Mm -hmm. Of course, sometimes it caused polio. Sometimes it uh, caused some people to be paralyzed. But it was working. It was effective in uh, extinction of the wild virus from mm -hmm. the ecosystem. Okay. Because the, it was by mouth, so it was going through the digestive system. And the uh, person who were vaccinated was eliminating uh, the virus in the system via its tool. Okay. So it was uh, getting to the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And uh, the whole family was revaccinated in that time because the mother was the, the, um, handling the diapers. Mm -hmm. and was reaccinating herself. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not possible to, uh, to, uh, to avoid it. Uh, so it was working in this uh, sense that it was really changing the virus in the ecosystem, but it had a, a high cost. Mm -hmm. So polio is a little, little different disease. Okay. You know? But the main reason why uh, diseases went away was uh, cleanliness, hygiene, um, hygiene, um, Maybe better food, food like everything. Mm. More fruits, vegetables instead of. Uh, there was a very mm. interesting mm. study. It was made in Pakistan, Karachi, maybe four, 15 years ago. I think it was in 2002. When they um, made a very simple study, it was just a rather poor neighborhood. Mm -hmm. One neighborhood was just the control, the other two were the intervent um, groups. One group got normal soup, soap, soap. The yeah. other got the disinfection soap. Like with antibacterial yeah, soap. Yeah, antibacterial soap with mm -hmm. And the instructions were very simple. Wash your hands after using your toilet. Wash your hands before preparing food. Wash your hands before eating the food. Wash your hands after you change the diapers in your baby. Yeah. And wash yourself and your baby or your child every day. Just put the soap on your and wash put, yourself. Wash yourself. Mm -hmm. Very simple. The people had no washing to, uh, water toilet. They were eating the same food. There were dirt everywhere, no canalization, nothing mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Only washing the hands. And the result was that during several months when using the soap, the incidence of pneumonia and acute uh, diarrhea mm -hmm. in children mm -hmm. fell down by 50%. Wow, that's huge. In, it's huge. Only washing the hands. And uh, you have to know that these diseases are little, are deadly because the, they, the child can probably die. don't get to the yeah. antibio don't get antibiotics, That's don't it. get infusions. That it's deadly. Um, pneumonia and diarrhea is killing about three or four million children worldwide a year, yes. every year. Mm -hmm. So only 50 person only washing your hands. And imagine that you gave them refrigerators. That mm -hmm. you look what the butcher is selling, whether it's clean that mm -hmm. you uh, put the, the water, uh, running water, mm -hmm. a water toilet. So by improving our yeah. conditions of hygiene, food, yeah. cleanliness, yeah. it's better than vaccinations. It, of it course, and without results. risk, because the soap doesn't kill anybody. Mm -hmm. And there were another study in Africa, there were several such studies, and it's necessary to say that the doctors who were <coughs> uh, conducting these studies were doctors who were living there, traveling there, and vaccinating and taking care of the children. That means that you have to believe in the vaccination because they were spending their professional life in Africa treating pure black children. Mm -hmm. You are not doing such, something like that before a profit, you know? So they were in the, uh, with their good intentions. They were taking care of the children and vaccinating them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they were uh, tracking the health status and tracking the mortality. And they find out, to their big surprise, that the children which they vaccinated have twice as high mortality as the unvaccinated children in Africa. Well, that's interesting. And uh, the reason the children were dying because of the infection, but they were dying because of so-called non-targeted diseases. They were not dying of the infections which were vaccinated against, but because of the other diseases probably adverse effects. And the authors of this study had to state in their discussion in the paper that vaccines are um, weakening the immunity, mm -hmm. the cell immunity, the Th1 immunity. Right. And that the, uh, the immunodeficit, which is caused, immunosuppression, which is caused by vaccine, make the children more, sus uh, more susceptible to other diseases and is high in mortality. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, as I was doing research on vaccinations and pharmaceutical industries, 
uh, it's a well-known fact in the United States that they're experimental. Vaccines are actually experimental. They're not really promising any protection or results. That's written in, in, in this little papers. It says vaccines are experimental and not necessarily effective. I mean, mm. they're admitting right now. And also, of course, they're doing a lot of experiments in a third world countries like Africa yeah. and India. Uh, recently, CDC has given out a study how 40,000 children in India has co have contracted polio mm. from the vaccine. Mm. And Indian doctors are saying it is from the vaccine that United States brought there. Mm. And I, I really believe this is being experimental on these children. They're experimenting on them and then doing all these studies. So the agenda is not very clean. It's an evil agenda, in my opinion. So um, you as a doctor, what do you recommend for parents? What, do you recommend vaccination? Maybe spread it out, start later? Because in the United States, children are vaccinated a few hours after birth. They're immediately given hepatitis B it's, vaccine. It's, it's a terrible thing. And it's... if you can imagine hepatitis B is, um, you can get it only by sexual contact or blood. Mm. So little baby that is born, when is this going to have a sex or any blood? Um. So uh, it makes no sense, but they're giving it a few hours after birth. And of course, it's then starts at two months and then four months and... They keep adding and adding. I mean, I mean they're getting cocktails. They're yeah. brand new. Uh, so uh, what do you recommend for these parents? Uh, well, before I answer, um, that you think it's not clean on agenda? Of course not. When I was talking that they were making the, the, the vaccines or trying to make vaccines against the really serious diseases, it stopped with polio. Mm -hmm. When they made the vaccines against the measles in the end of the 60s, the scientists asked Dr. Hillerman, who was one of the authors of the vaccine from the Mars, why do I making vaccine against disease, which is not a problem? Mm -hmm. It's a normal childhood disease. Nobody is dying from that now. I got mumps, and you he, know, when I was And little. he <laughs> said, well, because we can. It's like with Messner, who was uh, cl climbing up the Everest, mm -hmm. and they asked him, why are you going there to the Everest? Because it's here, it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not because it's necessary, but because it is here and we can try it. Mm -hmm. And then it went only down the water because uh, varicella, varicella, chickenpox. Mm -hmm. It's uh, better to get it when you smell. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, because the children, the children get the disease uh, several years after vaccination. Yeah. Why make a vaccine for chickenpox? It can be useful only for the children with some great immunodeficit which are really endangered by chicken box. Mm -hmm. But, or rotavirus vaccine, mm -hmm. it's the other nonsense. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a, a presentation of the PR ag agency, how they are making the PR action for this vaccine because they have vaccine and nobody wanted it because rotavirus is a normal, it's a very light disease, it's a no problem here. Right. It's a several days of diarrhea. Mm -hmm and almost everybody catch it during the childhood. And the children have antibodies from the mother during the first months. So if the child is breastfed, it's a nonsense to give him Nortavirus vaccine. So even the doctors are the puppets of the pharmacy industry because they should know that it's not worth to vaccinate it. So first was vaccine and then they were finding the market. Mm -hmm. So we have to heighten the information about the disease spread uh, fear of the disease, mm -hmm. make it, make the need for mm -hmm. the vaccine. Right. Make it necessary yeah. demand. So now if there's a new vaccine, usually it's not because the disease is really a terrible thing or it's, uh, it's um, uh, frequent and it's serious. It's that they make some vaccine, sometimes it happens, mm -hmm. and then they try to find out who to push it. Well, in the United States, uh, pharmaceutical companies that make vaccines uh, bring millions, billions of dollars uh, a year, mm -hmm. one year, billions of dollars of uh, profit. And of course. So do you think it's connected to money? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, follow the money is the mantra. Uh, but I, I should uh, answer your previous question, what to recommend to the children, you know, to the parents. Well, I think that... Um, Everybody has 
make his or her own decision mm -hmm. according to the information. Right. If um, another problem is the which is um, a little confounding the decision is the uh, legal situation here. Because in Czech Republic, the child has to be vac vaccinated to be uh, accepted to the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. It's a big pressure for the parents. You actually have it better than U.S. In U.S. you have to... Even for school. Even yes, for right. school. It's yeah. better, but it's not as good as in Slovakia when you just pay the fine and your child can go to the kindergarten. So Slovakia yeah. has... Right, just you pay the fine, so okay. okay. So here, you can get, get the fine as well, but they are not uh, giving them because there were several trials. Okay. Which ended in the constitutional uh, court, which said it's not possible to to make the fines. So they are not the uh, health authorities are not giving the fines anymore because it's uh, for them it's the vain job, vain, vain work. Uh, uh, but uh, there is a big pressure uh, that um, there is a paragraph in the in the um, law that the child had to be regularly vaccinated or have to has to be has to have contraindication. Mm -hmm. or has to be immune against the disease. And in other case, cannot go to the kindergarten. But here, kindergartens are very cheap. And for many people, it's the only way how this the state kindergarten, because the private kindergartens are quite expensive. expensive. It can be 10 times more. Yeah. And the price for the month's uh, private kindergarten can be as much as the salary of the woman. So mm -hmm. it's zero to zero. Right. So a lot of people which are not earning a lot of money need the state school, uh, kindergarten because they, the mother has to go to work. Do you have exemptions so, in Czech Republic? Uh, they are, well, you can have medical exemption and it's in the law. Then the child, if it has medical exemption, then he can go to the can go to the kindergarten because cannot be discriminated because of the health status. Mm -hmm. but How about religious exemption? Uh, but the doctors um, are not very willing to give the medical exemptions. Yeah, yeah. it must be really something very very bad mm -hmm. to give uh, the, uh, the exemption. Religious exemptions or even non-religious exemptions because of the consciousness mm -hmm. uh, is possible. There were two. Um, decisions of the constitutional law, uh, constitutional uh, court that you can have this exep exemption and you cannot be punished for that. That means you cannot get a fine, but still it's not a way how to get the child to the uh, kindergarten because they are saying it's not about the discrimination, it's about the protection of the public health. Right. You know, right. but it's a stupid argument because uh, it's only about kindergarten. Mm -hmm. When the child goes to school, can go to school without vaccine, but cannot go to some trips and uh, school in the nature and the camps without vaccination. So they can sit in the classroom next to one each other. But when they're in the nature no. and sun? No, no. It's just that yeah, how this harassment, you know, it's no public health. It's just the harassment. It's just the, the pressure how to keep people vaccinating because mm -hmm. um, uh, but and recently they say that the last year of the kindergarten from mm -hmm. the five year of age is mandatory and when something is mandatory there can be any condition so suddenly from one school year to another a year before the children cannot go to this kindergarten without vaccination now the five year old can mm -hmm. so there is no argument how to how to um, explain this in the terms of public health it's almost so, comical it's you know? comical. It, it mm -hmm. should be. It would be comical if it um, uh, would not uh, complicate the life of so many people. So yeah. there are no arguments on the establishment side. How can they explain and argue that we really need this law mm -hmm. to protect public health? The other thing is that even the children who are all the stands in their vaccination record probably are not immune. I saw surgical um, surveys. Mm -hmm. Ninety percent, ninety percent of kindergarten schools don't have enough antibodies against pertussis. Wow! Against pertussis bacteria. That means they are the antibodies they should make the collective immunity, the the herd immunity. Right. Ninety percent. Half per, uh, half school children don't have any antibodies against mumps. Hmm. But they need to be vaccinated to go to the camp. Wow. Well, it's ridiculous because mm -hmm. it's not working. There are a lot of failures. Mm -hmm. So every, and even in the purchases, maybe every 
um, if you look in the bigger picture, about 20% children who are coming to the kindergarten are not immune. There's an official number that the efficiency, effectiveness of the pertussis vaccine is about 80%. So everybody has to be vaccinated according to the law. Everybody has to be perfect record and nobody is interested in the fact that one fifth of them are not immune and can spread the disease. Mm -hmm. There was a case in Israel, I saw, uh, saw the study some years before, there was a baby in the family, the family has two older children and uh, one of the children took home a pertussis and infected the baby and the baby died. Uh, in the time of the, its death, uh, it has only one uh, hexa vaccine uh, shot. Mm -hmm. All the family was vaccinated. I think that they got vaccinated before the pregnancy, around the pregnancy, to uh, to make the cocoon protection. Mm -hmm. That means the cocoon means that the surrounding people around the baby are vaccinated, so they protect the child by themselves. It's just complete nonsense. But these people did it. So they were all recently vaccinated, all were coughing, and they were they were making the um, uh, the investi investigation mm -hmm. who brought the pertussis to the family. And the other siblings went to the some daycare center and 100% of the children in the daycare center was vaccinated and they found among these about 100 children, five carriers of mm -hmm. border pertussis. Mm -hmm. That means the authors of the study say that these vaccinated children are the reservoir of the infection and can infect the vulnerable infants. Mm -hmm. That means that the herd immunity in reality, there is no something like that. The, even the vaccinated can be infected and can spread it. And the problem was that they did not have the typical symptoms. They were just coughing a little. It mm -hmm. looked like asthma, it was a bronchitis. Nobody got suspicion, well, it could be pertussis because the cough was not so a problem, just mm -hmm. a normal cough. Right. Yeah. So if someone vaccinates himself to protect his child, is probably making himself a carrier mm -hmm. and is um, uh, making the probability that can infect the spread germ, the disease, spread it much more. Mm -hmm. So basically, vaccines are ineffective. Yeah, they are. You are in more danger by vaccinating yourself or your child than if you don't vaccinate. Um, um, is, do you have any families in Czech Republic that you know of that they don't vaccinate yeah. the children and yeah. children are healthy? Yeah, of course, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Very often, it's like that the, the first child is vaccinated because the parents are not informed, something wrong happened. Mm -hmm. They woke up, wake up, start to study, they yes. find out what they did, and mm -hmm. the next children are not vaccinated. And uh, without exception, or very small exception, the second and younger children are very, very healthy. Mm -hmm. I know a family where the first child is autistic. There was the encephalopathic reaction, encephalopathy after MMR vaccine. The child is very terribly, is very. Um, retardation so the child is about seven or six or seven but it's on the level of the one year child in mm -hmm. diapers not talking it's terrible so when the mother was expecting the second baby she was a little cautious so she vaccinated a little later but the girl had uh, the rigorous development as well she stopped talking uh, or babbling or uh, babbling or making noise uh, sounds after the hexa vaccine mm -hmm. was just lying or looking like that and doing nothing when she and she is now the girl is about three four and she's not talking or not talking maybe some words mm -hmm. she's a little word a little in the spectrum but not exactly autistic but there are signs of the spectrum but she's not talking mm -hmm. and the third child which is now one and a half year she didn't vaccinate at all and the child is perfect okay. before its age talking Mm -hmm. developing normally that was the and it's very often that first children are really damaged yes. then the, they all they say well it's genetics you are too old your my husband mm -hmm. is too old you uh, you have these and these risk factors but when the, ch uh, the parents decide not to vaccinate this, the other child it's usually without any problem yes that was the so case with us see it. Mm -hmm. they, they, they see have experience and with... there are studies where we are comparing the general health of the vaccinated and unvaccinated mm -hmm. children and that's the very funny thing. Maybe you are a journalist. Maybe you should ask some governments why they, because they are spending our money. Okay? We are paying some taxes and the vaccination is paid which from our taxes. Yes. 
So it's my money and your money. And uh, they are saying, uh, telling us it's for your good. Right. It's for the higher good. Mm -hmm. It's bad, but perfect because we are not so sick because we, sh we would pay much more money for the epidemics. You know, <laughs> we will die or we will be extincted. Uh, so I think it's very funny that we are vaccinated for 60 years and no government on the world, as far as I know, no, did a study which would took unvaccinated children and compared with fully vaccinated according to schedule and was looking at the incidence of asthma, allergies, neurological problems, just compared to general health. Mm -hmm. Maybe compared how much the uh, health insurance company pay in average for one unvaccinated child versus one fully vaccinated child. That would be interesting. If you dis uh, distract the, these, uh, you know, these are things like a, a well check, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, the checkups, etc. So uh, they are say, uh, and maybe compare the numbers because if it sh it's a prevention, it right. sh it, it sh uh, if the vaccination should save the money, we would pay in a case of epidemic. I want my government to prove it, mm -hmm. to give me numbers, to show me that these monies are sp well spent. Right. right. And it's very suspicious that no government did it because if they do it, and if it proves that vaccination is really, from the economic side, beneficial, there will be stop of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Nobody yes. will, will resist. Everybody will be thinking, okay, now I have, maybe there are some risk factors, but everything is risky in the life. So if you, you will get the proof that your child, as a vaccinated child, would be healthier than your unvaccinated peer, Mm -hmm. So, the answer is really education of the public, education of doctors, mm -hmm. that, that's the answer. But uh, going back to recommendation, because people are asking for, okay, we have done it, we have allowed doctors to inject our children, now what? What do we do? Is there any help? Is there any hope? Uh, of course there is a help. Uh, well, I think when the, if the child is okay, really okay. Mm -hmm. they, well, some kids they, are they relatively... They have good luck and they mm -hmm. can live it like that. Right. Uh, well, um, people ask me what to do. I feel everybody has to decide by itself, himself. Mm -hmm. So, you have the uh, information and you decide. I, after the years of the study, came to the conclusion that no vaccine is safe and no vaccine is safe the risk. So, it's worth the risk. Mm -hmm. So, for myself, I don't vaccinate myself for against anybody, not in my family. Mm -hmm. Because I know it. Right. Yeah. And I saw it for the first hand, I first hand it, and I, I really don't want to risk it. So, but some people are still afraid of the disease. Mm. So if they are really afraid of the disease, I tell them, okay, vaccinate, but make some precautious measures. That means the child or everybody who should be vaccinated must be healthy, mm -hmm. no cold, nothing like that. Right. Must be healthy in the moment, at least months must be healthy. Perhaps so, they should start later, when the uh, immune system is more mature? Definitely. If we are talking about the babies, I would never ever allow anybody to touch my child with vaccine before one year of age. Wow. I think that six months is the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. It's the absolute minimum. And it's not just my opinion, because the, the uh, scientists which were uh, talking and discussing the SEA syndrome, and they saw how the uh, in the animals, how the uh, aluminum is getting to the brain, say that they should they should not be vaccinated. Children should not be vaccinated before the six uh, months because of the lacking uh, blood brain barrier. Right. That is really getting to the brain. Mm -hmm. This is very really neuroproxic. So a little later and spread the doses, mm -hmm. maybe two, three, four months intervals between the doses, and be very cautious about what's going on. If mm -hmm. something's wrong after the vaccination, something is different. You have to have just a mother instinct. It's not. It cannot be. It not, mm -hmm. needn't to be something really huge. Just you think the child is not very the same. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing. Be very cautious. So, child must be healthy. It must be a little spread the schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, the argument for the doctor when the mother is struggling with the doctor, the doctor says, well, I have to give you the second dose after one month. It must be like that. Right. No, it must not need to be like that. And even the, um, the um, immunological literature says that if you spread the doses, that the uh, effect is lasting longer. Right. 
So it will be better protection from the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Never combine, combine the like vaccine. MMR. Like MMR. Uh, like Hexa and uh, yeah. uh, Prevenar or something mm -hmm. like that. Never combine, never two or three no, three vaccine together. Mm -hmm. Just spread it. Uh, now I'm not a fan of uh, the um, dividing the vaccines to the different, you know, uh, people say, well, I want some vaccine which is not so combinated, like Hexa, there's a six diseases. Mm -hmm. But you have to know that if you divide it, say, for example, give DTP and extra polio and extra hepatitis B and extra hemophilus, you have suddenly four times more doses. And the doses are not about the stitching, about the stitch, about the injection. It's mm -hmm. about the stimulation of the immunity. Mm -hmm. Every dose of any vaccine is stimulating immunity in the way I was talking about. Mm -hmm. That in any dose, you are risking autoimmunity, you are risking allergy, you are risking some neurological problem. Mm -hmm. every time. So I think that it's better to give it much later and uh, give just this. If you need to have the uh, all the diseases according to the schedule because of the kindergarten or something. So if your goal is to give everything but in a more safe way, then postpone it as much as possible and give three doses only, mm -hmm. one, second and the third with a longer interval. Uh, of the some hexa vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, if it's necessary for the country, yeah. because it's safer than to divide it and giving a lot of doses. But you know, there's more and more and more brave people. Mothers mm -hmm. don't want to vaccinate mm -hmm. at all. Like for example, after what happened to us with our son, our daughter didn't get any vaccine. I didn't allow hospital mm -hmm. to give her hepatitis B at birth, and she never received, never one vaccine in her entire life. Now she will get some um, flu maybe or a little cold, but that's about it. She's very healthy and she has great appetite. She's a very healthy child. So more and more people are yeah. waking up. So I think that maybe we should uh, keep educating, keep talking about this. Definitely. Uh, s uh, on a social media, just get connected with friends, talk about your problems, don't be afraid. We need to beat the system. We need to speak out. And now we have these doctors on our side. We have professional doctors coming out with those studies, with their experiences. So uh, maybe we need to get all of us together and keep educating, keep speaking about it, right? Yeah, because the, uh, I think it's the only or the one of the more important way, mm -hmm. uh, because the system always resists to change. Right. Yeah, if you look in the history, all the big change were from downside. Mm -hmm. And all you know, in... came from the downside. And um, you, you cannot expect from a, say, professor somewhere on the clinic, who all his professional life was saying the vaccination is great, was um, writing papers and um, uh, going to the conferences mm -hmm. and uh, recommending that suddenly he said, oops, we were wrong all the time. <laughs> yeah. But the, the funny thing is that um, the science is really on the side of anti-vaccination because it's showing what's going on under the cover, what's really it's making in the body and it's terrific, mm -hmm. terrifying, mm -hmm. terrifying, not terrific, the wrong word. Yeah, it's terrifying. Really terrifying. Well, I really don't want to, uh, to uh, that something like that is going in my body. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that if somebody is not uh, forced to vaccinate because of the kindergarten or other pressures and feels that he or she doesn't want to vaccinate. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, so there are some it. more brave families right now who are willing mm. to go to court and they're willing to bring yeah. them to the paper, to the journalists, to TV stations. They're, they're willing to fight. And I think more and more people are coming out now mm. with that. And that's wonderful. And we have to focus on no fear, but beating the system based on scientific Just studies. Just information. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Education people are waking is the up. key. People are waking up. Uh, some, but I think the system would not give up uh, smoothly because there's a lot, a lot of money there. Well, there are yeah. Are doctors so. compensated uh, directly for vaccinating? Like if yeah. they vaccinate, yeah, how they many? Are, uh, they are. They. It's not so much. It's in our. Uh, it's about how to say about seven to eight euro for vaccination mm -hmm. but they get some bonuses from the um, uh, health uh, insurance company if they are high coverage uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. th then they get some maybe it can be some several thousand rounds a month so 
-hmm. And if they are not really bribed by the companies, there are not much bigger money there. Mm -hmm. So it, there are motivation. And there is a motivation with the pressure with the education system, which we are still keeping them in the fear of the diseases and really it's a propaganda, yeah. terrible propaganda. Like we spoke in the beginning, medical schools and are still... The health authorities are harassing the doctors as well. Mm -hmm. And for, for, I don't understand why they get themselves harassed because the, the authorities have no right to harass them. Are you going through ostracism? A harassment? No, so much. It's, it's strange. I never have some problems, but not... Between. Maybe everybody got used to you by now, like, oh yeah. Probably, yes. <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, I don't Google myself, yeah, so... Well, when I, when I Google do, your name... Me, I don't di let distract, uh, distract yeah. by these things. When I Google your name, um, Udr, Dr. Ludmila Elekova, it comes up always, always with anti-vaccine. Uh, agenda, something against vaccines. Your name is definitely connected. So maybe, you know, they give, leave you alone by now, which is fantastic. So I think that it's it's older, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'm not um, myself just the only voice which is talk, uh, speaking. There are a lot mm -hmm. of people who are saying really? the same. And uh, the science is on my side. There was a case of the doctor, um, uh, I don't remember how she was her name, who won a uh, um, um, argument with the British Medical Chamber because she was saying the vaccination is not good mm -hmm. and they were uh, harassing her in some uh, disciplinary Is she trial. in the UK? Or? In the UK okay. and she proved mm -hmm. and the Medical Council have to say that she's right. Mm -hmm. So it was a big, it's funny that you don't see it in the newspaper. Yeah. Well, we are very uh, thankful that we have these brave uh, male and female doctors in the United States and in Europe, who are willing to fight publicly, and uh, you are guys doing service to humanity mm -hmm. and to mothers and fathers who know about this, who have noticed that something is wrong with vaccines, and it's really fresh air to us that we can find doctors to come to who understand us. So let's keep fighting the system, let's keep talking truth, and uh, speak and have no fear. And I wanna thank you so much for today's interview. Hopefully we will do some more in the future, <laughs> more specific ones. And we are planning a huge anti-vax conference here in Prague, Czech Republic. Dr. Ludmila Elekova, as well as Dr. Sherry Tenpenny are going to be our main speakers and we will keep you posted about days and times. Thank you for watching.